I want to show you guys a secret feature that your Denon and Marantz receivers have. This is going to make you a pro. Hey folks, I'm Gene Delisello with Audioholics. Today I want to talk to you guys about how to configure your Denon or Marantz receivers from a web app. So if your receiver is on the network and your computer is on that same network, you could enter the receiver configuration through your IP address of that AVR and do all the different settings you want. Now you could also use your phone. Denon has and Marantz has a app on their phone. It's not a bad app. It's not perfect, but it is usable and that is an option for you. But I do really like the flexibility of the web app. You just have, it's a better interface. It's easier to configure. And what brought this whole video about is my brother just got a Denon uh, 3600 or 3700 AVR and he's putting Atmos speakers in the ceiling. He didn't know how to configure them. So shout out to my brother, Dominic. This video is for you. But for everybody else that didn't know about this feature, it's a benefit to you guys as well. So the first thing you have to do, obviously, is connect your receiver to Ethernet or to Wi-Fi. I always prefer doing a hardwire connection. It's just more stable. Get the IP address of that AVR. You can look it up um, either in the app that you have, or you can turn on the receiver, go to the network settings, and it'll show you the IP address. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share my screen with you and show you guys just all the different things you can do with this app. So here's the IP address of my AVR. And the interesting thing is it's not a secure connection. So you're gonna have to bypass that warning that you get with your browser, which I had before, and just ignore it and proceed on and you'll be able to get into your receiver. And as you guys can see here, I've got the Marantz SR8015 here. This is powering the family room system of the Audioholic Smart House. Love this receiver. As you guys know, you've seen my review. You've seen my measurements on it. It's awesome receiver. So anyway, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the main zone. The main zone is your surround zone, and that's where all your um, Atmos speakers and all your main speakers, if you're a home theater, basically. Turn that on. And you hear click on. Once you hear click on, you have access to all these different menus. Now, the most important one of these for your configuration for your system is the speaker menu here. And the first thing you'll want to do is go into the amp assign menu. So now I have mine set for 11.1 .1 channel. This is a this receiver does have 11 internal amplifiers. It's able to process up to 13 channels if you add a two channel amp. These are all the different configuration, speaker configurations you can choose. You also have a pre-amplifier mode, which basically it doesn't turn off the amplifiers. It disconnects the amplifiers. If you want to just use this receiver as a AV, as an AV processor, and it's a very good processor, as you've seen in my measurements, and I'll link them into the video uh, cards here. This thing is as good as some of the best processors on the market. It just has a really good preamp section. So if you don't want to use the internal amps, you set up a preamplifier mode, and then you can go in and, and hook up your external amplification, and you can do all your speaker connections to those um, separate amplifiers. So in my situation, I'm running a 5.2.4 system. So I could either put it as 9.1, and front B, I could put it as 9.1 9 in another zone, which is really cool. So you could use those amplifiers in another zone, as you can see here, zone two or zone three. In my case, I left it at 11.1 because I, I have um, audio distribution throughout the house using control four. I'm using a triad amplifier and I'm using also a Anthem or a Martin Logan amplifier. So I'm not using the multi-zone capabilities of any of the APRs in my system. But if you want to do that, Dan in the Marantz has an excellent system called HEOS. And you can do all your zone control. And you can use the unused amplifiers for those zones to power those speakers in those other zones. Excellent flexibility there. But in my case, in my system, it's a nine-speaker system. I'm only using nine of the channels. I'm setting it for 11 channel right there. Then you have your different layout for your floor speakers. Now here's where uh, your height layout comes. So you have different configuration options here. In my case, I'm doing four height speakers, uh, Dolby, uh, 
Dolby Atmos. I'm not doing the reflection, the bouncy house speakers. So this is where you set it here, four channel height speakers. Now the layout is also important. If you're putting the speakers in the ceiling, you wanna use top front, rear front, or rear layout, top rear. Um, if you're putting them up on the front wall and the back wall, like an Oro setup, you would use the height channels. And to be honest with you, 95% of you are gonna be using tops in the ceiling. That's what Dolby Atmos is really all about. Oro 3D really doesn't have any software. So if you're not uh, worried about using their up mixer, then just use the um, the tops and put the speakers in the ceiling as we recommend in many of our videos. So there's where you do the layouts uh, for that, all your different configuration options here. If you're only using two speakers here, you would just configure for two channel Dolby speaker and you'll be good to go. And then uh, put this as a top as well. So other menus here, you got your speaker configuration. This is basically your base management. In my case, I'm running all my speakers small. I've got, I'm treating it as one subwoofer because I have, even though I have two subwoofers, um, it's a JL Audio in-wall subwoofers, the 213s. It's one amplifier powering two drivers in different locations of the room. Luckily, they're equidistant to my listening area, so one channel delay works really well. In that case, I set mine for one speaker or one subwoofer. If you've got multi-sub and you want to have independent delay control and independent time control or uh, level control, you'll want to set that subwoofer setting to two. And you got that there. Again, I recommend all your speakers in most cases to be set small and let all the bass below 80 hertz go to the subwoofers. Here's where you have your distance settings. You could use the Odyssey mic that came uh, with your setup and, and hit the auto EQ and you can uh, allow the system to run for the delays and the levels, and then you could go and turn off Odyssey if you prefer. Um, I think when I set the system up, since the receiver was in a different room, I basically used a laser pointer and I measured the distances from the listening area and I put them in here. And this is what I did here for all my different speaker distances. It's very important that you do this step. So if you have a speaker that's your front left speaker is 12 feet away, put 12 feet in there. If your center speaker is 11 feet away, put 11 feet in there. It gives you increments, I think, of two tenths of a foot or a tenth of a foot. So it's very precise. Uh, you should be able to dial that in really well. And uh, the subwoofer, um, some subwoofers have DSP built in, like the JL Audio. So sometimes you have to increase that distance to compensate for the delay that's in the amp. So you can't always just go by the physical distance of a speaker in that case. That's why you see my subwoofer is 15 feet away, um, even though they're a little bit closer than that. Then you got your levels. Um, I didn't even know it showed a pictorial graph like this. I thought it just showed the dBs. So anyways, this is where you set your levels and you have half dB uh, increments here. And then your base management. Like I said, I have um, my speakers all set to 80 hertz. Now you could do them also individually. So you could you could basically select different crossover points for each speaker group. Generally, I don't recommend changing that more than about 20 hertz per speaker group. If you're, if you're using a speaker that's really tiny and you need to bump it up to 150 hertz, you probably wanna reevaluate and, and get a speaker that's more capable uh, like the rest of the speakers in your system. Maybe the only exception would be the Atmos speakers. You can, you know, you can roll those off a little higher, 100 hertz, 120 hertz, and you'll be fine. So anyways, that's where you set the uh, bass management uh, filters there. Then the bass mode, uh, in this case, I'm running LFE, not LFE plus main. If you guys could watch the video I did on what the difference is on that, if you don't understand that. And I set the low pass filter. This is only for the LFE content. It's not for the subwoofer for any speaker that's bass managed. I leave that at the default 120 hertz because that's what the Dolby spec is for the LFE channel. It could go up to 120 hertz. If you feel like that could be localized for any reason, you can go and bring that down to 80 hertz or whatever you think your preference is. And then they have one thing I really like about these Denon and Marantz receivers is they have separate bass management for two channel. Um, in my case, I don't really need it just because I need the subs in my system all the time. So I leave it on when I have it for the home theater mode. But you guys might be purists. You might want to just hear your tower's full range if you're playing vinyl or you're playing high resolution CD and you don't want to have the subs involved. Uh, you can go in here and have separate bass management settings. 
for most people, I recommend don't doing that. You know, get good integration with your subwoofers and your main speakers, and you shouldn't be able you should be able to use your subwoofers all the time. That's just my take on that. And then the speaker presets, you can actually upload up to two different presets. So you can have one configuration. Um, let's say you're sitting in the sweet spot and you put it in preset one. Then your mother-in-law comes over and she sits in your seat when you're watching a movie and you're, you're stuck on the end of the uh, theater chairs or your couch. Go and calibrate a second seat and get everything set up for that money seat and then go and select uh, preset two and don't tell your mother-in-law that you did that. Let her think she's got the best seat. So that's covers the speaker stuff. Um, audio, you just have your different center channel adjustments. If you want to make on the fly different adjustments here, you got your surround parameters here. I'm really happy that uh, Denon and, Mar and Marantz brought back the center spread feature for the Dolby up mixer. I have a video on that. You guys could search the channel on. If you're doing two channel music up mixing, turn the center spread on. It just makes your, your uh, music sound so much better. If that's off, what's going to happen is your left and right information, a lot of that's going to dump to the center channel and you're going to lose the stereo imaging you get from the front speakers when you're listening with the up mixer. And that's, I believe that's why a lot of people think the Oromatic up mixer sounds better than the Dolby up mixer when in fact it really doesn't in my experience. It's because they don't set the center spread to on. They don't adjust these parameters. And some of the receivers, you can't even do it anymore. Any receiver that has Dolby virtualization for the high channels, that feature, they tend to take the center spread feature off. I think it's kind of stupid. It's something to do with the licensing with Dolby. Luckily, Den and Marantz were able to circumvent that, and now they have both options supported. But some of the receivers don't even have this option. I think the new Yamahas, I looked for the center spread and I couldn't find it. So it's nice to know that the Marantz has it. Um, a lot of that is because you guys wrote in when I made a video on it and complained. Dan and the Marantz were very receptive, heard that, and they basically restored it. So kudos to them and kudos to you guys for keeping it real. And then these are just settings. Uh, I don't use compression. You can use it if you want at night, if you don't want the loud passages to get really loud and wake someone up. This is audio lip sync delay. If you have any type of lip sync issues, if you hear the audio differently from when the video is on, you can adjust that there. And I don't know why Marantz and Denon still use a graphic EQ. I wish they would change this and switch to a PEQ because these are not very helpful here. If you want to do any type of bass correction, you can't do this with one octave bands. You need something better than that. So I'm hoping they listen and they watch this video and they change this to a PEQ because that would be, at least for the subwoofer channel, that would be immensely, immensely helpful. So I think that covers most of it. Then you got your input assignments here. You could rename your, your input assignments, rename your sources. You can have different sources play to different uh, outputs on the receiver. So if you want Blu-ray to be on HDMI 3 or if you want to change that, this is really cool that they just basically let you redo all your inputs on your receiver. Just a lot of flexibility here. Then you've got you know your HDMI upscaling stuff that goes on here as well. Picture adjustments if you use the uh, if you use that feature on here. Um, and then of course you got your HEOS account for those that are doing their music management system in the AVR. And here's your network setup. So it's basically, it mirrors everything that's in your AVR, but it does it from the web. And this is really useful if you can't access the on-screen display for whatever reason, or if you want to uh, remotely configure a receiver. So I think this is really cool. I hope that clears things up for you guys. Um, yeah, so why don't you give me some comments down below? Are you using the web app? Did you even know that your receiver, your Dan and Marantz receiver, have this feature? Or are you happy with the phone app? And like I said, the phone app, is it? it's good when it works. It's a bit sluggish sometimes. I have kind of mixed results with it. But it does give you good um, feedback on your AVR. It shows you. If you ever want to know, you probably can't see this. But if you ever want to know... Um, the output that's playing at any given time, you can go into here, click on output. You could see if you're playing Dolby Atmos or if you're playing, um, you know, just two channel or 5.1 channel. It'll give you that information. You can also get that from the on-screen display of your AVR. 
But some systems, if you're running through a control system, you may not have access to your on-screen display. At least you could pull up this app. It's it's in the Play Store. It's in the Apple Store as well. And you can do all that function through the AVR. So you really have three different ways to control your AVR. You have your remote control with the on-screen display through your display, your TV, projector, whatever you have. You have the phone app, which is great, is okay, but not great. And then you got the web editor, which is really awesome. It lets you do pretty much everything you want to the receiver, even if you're not in the same room as your AVR. So guys, I hope you found this video useful. Please hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up. We appreciate that. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audioholics. You get direct access to me if you want to ask questions, suggest video topics. And that's it. Until next time, my friends, keep listening.